Well, here you finally have him, you nagging little scumbags. The killer fucking moth. People have nagged me to do a video about this guy for years. I'm frankly shocked at how popular he is. I mean, sure, Killer Moth is fun as a silly joke character, but seriously, he seems to be a lot of people's favorite Batman villain. That I simply find crazy. What's even crazier are the people who say that he's actually cool. Have you not seen how the guy dresses? Anyway, finding good Killer Moth stories is not easy. It's even a challenge to judge what a good Moth story is. He's a joke character after all, so does that mean bad Moth stories are the good ones? Well, anyway, I did my best, and let's get to the list. Number 5. The Misfits from Shadow of the Bat, issues 7 to 9, published in 1992. The story was written by Alan Grant and penciled by Tim Sale. I actually did a video on this one 10 years ago, so it's not like I've never talked about Killer Moth before. Anyway, in it, the Moth teams up with three other loser villains, Calendar Man, Catman, and Newcomer the Chancer, to form the loser villain group, the Misfits. Moth is the leader of this group. Tired of being treated as lame jokes, these loser villains decide to prove once and for all that they're a force to be reckoned with. They have thus concocted a diabolical plot to kidnap and hold for ransom the city's most powerful men, Commissioner Gordon, Mayor Kroll, and of course Bruce Wayne. With a crime this grand, they'll surely get the respect they so badly want, right? Well, obviously not, as except for Catman, these guys are still considered to be pathetic jokes. Well, except for by the fanatic Killer Moth fans out there, the people who nagged me for this video. To you guys, the Moth is the king of crime. If only he himself knew just how many fans he has, he would die of happiness. So like I said in my old video on this story, it's very flawed. It's got a great premise though, and some very fun moments. I love the idea of the losers banding together to prove themselves, and Killer Moth being their leader is of course very fitting. This was actually the character's first post-crisis appearance, and in contrast with later appearances, he's quite a nasty guy. This is one story where he does live up to his name of being a killer. So he's an evil loser villain, not a very sympathetic loser villain. Certainly an interesting and unique portrayal. Number 4. The Origin of Killer Moth from Batman 63, published in 1951. This was the character's very first appearance, and it was written by Bill Finger while the penciler was Lou Sayer Schwartz. As the title suggests, it's the classic origin tale of Killer Moth. Moth is introduced as an unnamed convict. He is, for some reason, a big fan of Batman, or at least of his methods. And while serving time in prison, he concocts a scheme to mimic the Batman's MO. Once he's finally released, he takes on the moniker of Cameron Van Cleer, and using stashed away loot from his crimes, sets up a front of being a respectable socialite in Gotham. Hiding behind his front, Cameron creates his alter ego, Killer Moth, the Batman for criminals, complete with a moth cave and a moth mobile. Just like the caped crusader protects the innocent from outlaws, Killer Moth will protect outlaws from the law. All the criminals have to do is shine the moth signal in the sky and Killer Moth will come to their rescue. Of course, unlike Batman, he ain't doing it for free. To save crooks, he demands a cut from their loot. So yes, this is a story that started it all. The wacky career of Killer Moth, the anti-Batman. I don't know if I can call this a genuinely good comic, it's more of a so bad it's good story. The idea of a Batman for criminals is after all pure camp. And choosing moths as the theme is completely puzzling. What's even more puzzling is his choice of wardrobe. Did he really think that would strike fear into the hearts of lawmen? The thing is though, despite its silly nature, this comic is pretty much written completely straight. Killer Moth is portrayed as a serious villain after all. He even kills people. I don't think we're supposed to find him funny. So it's all unintentionally goofy, which just makes it even funnier. I really don't know what was going on in Bill Finger's head when he wrote this. Maybe he was drunk, or maybe he just didn't give a shit. Number 3 Batman's Double, from Detective Comics 173, again published in 1951. This was the character's third appearance, and I guess the final part of the original Killer Moth trilogy, if you want to call it that. It was once again penciled by Lucier Schwartz, but I can't find any information as to who wrote it. I guess no one wants to take credit for this crap, except for Bob Kane of course. 
Following the events of the second Moth story, which will not appear on this list, the Moth's front of millionaire Cameron Van Cleer has been compromised. Realizing that in order to resume his protection racket for criminals, he must create a new millionaire front. It's too much of a hassle to start from scratch though, so he decides to assume the identity of an already existing millionaire socialite. And who does he choose? Why Bruce Wayne, of course. So, Killer Moth goes to a shady plastic surgeon and has his face operated on to look like Wayne's. This Bruce Wayne duplicate then clobbers the real Wayne on the head and takes his place. However, what happens when this fake Wayne goes to Wayne Manor and meets up with a totally unsuspecting Dick Grayson? Yep, he's led straight into the Batcave. Stumbling upon the Batman's secret identity was certainly not what Killer Moth had planned. And he then also takes Batman's place. Yeah, as unbelievable as this all may sound, this story does actually exist. I am not making it up. Killer Moth, of all people, was the first villain to discover Batman's identity, 20 years before Ra's al Ghul did so, who is often mistakenly credited as the first. And not only that, but he also takes Bruce Wayne's and Batman's place, so he beat Hush to the point by half a century. Killer Moth, the original anti-Batman and the original Hush. I don't think I need to explain why this story deserves a spot on the list. Number 2 Buggin' Insects and Violence, from Robin issues 23 and 24, published in 1995. This two-parter, written by Chuck Dixon and penciled by Aaron Lapresti, served as a tie-in to the event Underworld Unleashed. I've talked about this event many times in the past, so you should know it by now. Long story short, a demon called Neron comes to Earth and offers all the supervillains of the DC Universe incredible powers, in exchange for their souls, of course. This story begins with Killer Moth crying in his Arkham cell about how he wants respect and to be feared. The poor loser dreams of being a big time supervillain like the Joker or the Scarecrow, but of course no one ever takes him seriously. Then Neron shows up out of nowhere in his cell and offers him the deal. Probably the easiest sales pitch he ever had to make. Neron promises Moth that with these powers people will indeed fear him and no one will ever laugh at him again. What then happens is that the moth begins to mutate inside a cocoon. What later comes out of the cocoon is an actual moth, or rather a hideous moth monster. The old goofy killer moth is gone and in his place stands a grotesque creature, hungry for human flesh. I love this story. It's like a horror story. Batman meets alien. Of course, Killer Moth being a giant bug monster isn't something I like to see becoming permanent, but it works fine as a temporary thing. It's a fun change of pace. You're not really meant to take this comic too seriously. It's fun horror schlock that pokes fun at the character of Moth. And now for the greatest Killer Moth story of them all. Yay. Number 1, Batgirl Year 1, a 9-issue maxi-series published in 2003. It was written by Scott Betty and Chuck Dixon and penciled by Marcus Martin. So as the title suggests, this story is a retelling of the first Batgirl comic. It is also a retelling of the first Killer Moth comic, sort of. And those two stories are basically combined here, while a lot of new stuff is added as well, of course. Killer Moth is a loser villain who's trying to make a rep for himself and establish a protection racket for criminals. Basically the same old story, but told far more in depth here. No one wants to hire the moron though, of course, and can you blame them? However, he then meets a man named Garfield Linz, a pyromaniac and former movie effects man. Moth decides to form a criminal duo with this Linz and dubs him Firefly. Is Firefly a bit too crazy and extreme for poor old Moth though? Yes, yes he is, because he is a true villain, unlike Mothy, who's just a lame wannabe. Meanwhile, Batgirl, a new vigilante in town, just won't leave him alone and keeps messing up his harebrained schemes. Poor Moth, he just can't catch a break, and all he wants is to be a cool supervillain. When people talk about Killer Moth, it's usually this story they're talking about, even if they don't know it. While we had seen elements of this Killer Moth in earlier stories, this is where it all truly came together. A naive geek and fan of supervillains who desperately wants to be one himself. But he can't, he just isn't made out of the right material, unlike Firefly. A kind of tragic comedic story in a way, and the only moth tale that is truly fantastic. 
So there you have it, Killer Moth, finally. Now you can stop nagging about him, thank you. Not really sure what's up next, I got lots of ideas but don't know which one to pick first. I guess we'll just see. And as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.